I'm Hrishikesh from University of Florida, and today I'll be presenting uh, a new physical remote attack on LiDAR-based autonomous driving frameworks. This work is a collaboration between University of Florida, University of Michigan, and University of Electrocommunications. Uh, in this work, we discover and study a new vulnerability in spinning LiDAR sensors used in autonomous vehicles. Uh, we show that the LiDAR sensor data can be selectively removed by injecting fake pulses in the close proximity of the LiDAR. We then study the impact of such attacks on perception models such as Baidu Apollo and Point Pillars and show that the object detection rate drops up to 100%. We observe a 100% drop in uh, object detection rate for LiDAR-based detection models and 92% in, in uh, sensor fusion models. We then show in simulation that at high speed, uh, the attack can cause the, uh, the, the vehicle to crash into a trajectory in its, uh, crash into obstacle in its trajectory. Uh, in the real world evaluation, we observe a 92% attack success rate where more than the 90% of the obstacle is removed. Uh, we then show that the existing defense techniques against spoofing attacks such as Carlo and uh, shadow-based detections are insufficient to mitigate the attack. We then propose and evaluate two novel detection techniques and reach up to a 91% true positive rate. Uh, before going into the details of this attack, let's take a look at how LiDAR sensor works and how it's used in autonomous vehicles. Uh, LiDAR sensors use time of flight information to estimate the distance of the surrounding obstacles. Uh, in this work, we study the vulnerability in 3D spinning LiDARs, uh, more specifically the VLP16 LiDAR. Uh, these, uh, these LiDARs consist of a stack of laser diodes that continuously fire laser pulses around uh, with the help of a mechanical rotating motor. These pulses are intercepted by the, uh, by the obstacles and are backscattered back to the LiDAR. These scattered pulses are known as the echoes. The LiDAR then estimates the distance of the obstacle based on the time of flight and the speed of flight, uh, the time of flight and the speed of light information. Uh, along with the distance information, the LiDAR also estimates the intensity of the points based on the magnitude of the received echoes. This raw information about the distance and the intensity are stored in the form of a point cloud. Uh, typically, 3D commercial uh, LiDARs consist of a minimum operational threshold under which no detection is guaranteed. Note that the echoes are still received under this threshold, but the, the resulting cloud point can be inaccurate for certain applications. For this reason, the, uh, the manufacturers recommend uh, a minimum operation threshold ranging somewhere between five centimeters and one meter from the LiDAR enclosure. Now, the photodiodes in the sensor can reach mul can receive multiple echoes because the pulses can uh, hit multiple obstacles in its in its trajectory. Um, so the LiDAR can be operated in multiple modalities. For example, the single echo mode where the nearest echo is recorded, the strongest echo mode where the strongest received echo is recorded, or multiple echo mode where more than one echo can be recorded. Uh, for the use of autonomous vehicles, uh, generally the nearest echo is considered to be the default mode since uh, the nearest obstacles are of more safety critical importance to, um, to for decision making. Autonomous driving frameworks also incorporate uh, a middleware framework that handles the underlying hardware abstraction and the communication between several modules, sensors, and actuators. Uh, for example, the most popular one is the robot operating system. Along with the uh, minimum operational threshold, uh, uh, recommended by the sensor, the, the, the middleware and the autonomous driving framework implement their own operational thresholds, which can be different from the, recommended, from the one recommended by the, by the sensor. Uh, the LiDAR data passes through these middleware softwares and the, uh, and the frameworks before it, it is processed by the machine learning in the autonomous driving perception. Previous works have demonstrated that laser spoofing attacks can be used to inject uh, echoes into the LiDAR field of view to induce fake obstacles in the scene. Uh, this setup uses, uses uh, the setup used in the work consists of a laser beam that is precisely synchronized with the spinning of the LiDAR um, to inject accurate fake echoes at controlled distances. We use a similar setup, but instead to achieve point cloud removal. Based on what we saw before, we found a new vulnerability in LiDAR data acquisition process. Uh, when we inject fake point clouds closer to the LiDAR enclosure, the automatic filtering process of the sensor, the middleware, and the autonomous driving framework force the removal of the legitimate points in the scene. This slide briefly illustrates the um, attack principles. The left image shows uh, 
the traffic cone without any attack. The middle image shows that when a cloud point is spoofed in between the LiDAR and the obstacle, the points from the obstacle are discarded. And when spoofing happens under the minimum operation threshold, they are further filtered by the automatic filtering that's happening. We also demonstrate that our removal attack works for other LiDAR modalities, uh, since the spoof points are not only the closest ones, but also the ones with the highest uh, intensity. Based on this vulnerability, we form the following threat model. Uh, the goal of the attacker is to impact the safety of the autonomous driving vehicle. The attacker can ac accomplish this by selectively removing a point cloud region uh, by injecting fake points in, under the operational threshold of the LiDAR. First, we conduct empirical experiments to investigate the maximum number of points uh, that can be removed to understand the attacker capability. Uh, for all the real-world experiments, we use a VLP-16 LiDAR. Uh, we increase the horizontal angle uh, by increasing the number of spoof points uh, by 100 in each iteration, as you can see in this um, image. It's supposed to be a GIF, but... Uh, knowing the distance D of the target obstacle, uh, uh, the, uh, we define the resulting mood, uh, remote area in terms of a chord length. Um, in this graph, we show a linear trend of remote points with the spoofer located at 2.5 meters in indoor scenarios and up to 10 meters in outdoor scenarios. We achieve a removal up to 3,400 points, uh, uh, stably at a 45 degree attack angle. Uh, after this, the removal becomes a little unstable, so we set this as the maximum attacker capability. Note that the attacker can spoof the points, removing up to 45 degrees in either directions uh, in the field of view uh, simultaneously. We then analyze the attack's capability to completely remove a target object from the LiDAR's perception at, by placing a cone at two, three, and four meters from the LiDAR. Uh, we evaluate at the attack based on the percentage of the points removed with respect to the tar target uh, point cloud. Um, and we increase the attack angle by one degree, uh, and we observe that for a 60 degree attack angle, the entire obstacle was completely removed. The output of the perception module directly influences the autonomous vehicle's safety critical decisions. We therefore explore how our attack, uh, uh, removal attack can affect the obstacle detection. For this, we consider 200 obstacles from the KDA data set, 100 pedestrian and 100 vehicles. Uh, we select the obstacles that have the highest object, detect, object conference score from the um, Apollo segmentation model to consider the worst attacker scenarios. Uh, we simulate the attack by removing the point of the target uh, with one degree increments in attack angle until the entire obstacle is completely removed. We first evaluate the attack on uh, point pillars and Baidu Apollo. We measure the confidence score of the target obstacle and observe that a three degree and a two degree attack angles are required to completely remove the pedestrians for Apollo and point pillars respectively, and a 15 degree and a six degree attack angles are required in the case of vehicles. Um, we also evaluate the attack on uh, auto vehicle clustering. Here we use the, uh, we evaluate based on the removal percentage, where we uh, measure the percentage of the cluster points removed with respect to the actual uh, cloud point. And we, we, saw, we observe that a 23 degree attack angle and eight degree attack angle are required to completely remove the vehicle and pedestrian uh, cluster. What about fusion? Um, Fusion in autonomous vehicles help to compensate for the accuracy limitations in individual sensors. We evaluate the attack on three different uh, camera ladder fusion models. Uh, and we evaluate in two different modes of analysis. The AVE mode where the intersection or union, where the object is considered to be detected if the intersection or union is greater than zero. And the DEF mode where we consider the default intersection or union values. We observe that the uh, pedestrian detection drops below 4% and the vehicle detection drops below 7% in the DEF mode. Uh, for the auto wear, the detection almost always goes to zero when the entire obstacle is removed because auto wear requires detection from both camera and LiDAR to be able to fuse them. To illustrate the consequence of the attack in a more realistic scenario, we, use, uh, we simulate the attack on the industry grade LGSVL simulator. We synthesize the attack on the simulated point cloud and send it to Apollo uh, and record the decisions made by the autonomous vehicle. For each scenario, we tested uh, a victim AV moving at a constant acceleration from zero to 32 kilometers per hour in a single lane. We record the speed and the reaction of the autonomous vehicle with two types of static obstacles, a vehicle and a pedestrian. 
at, located at five different positions uh, on the road. We then start the attack when the AV's distance from the obstacle is 50, is 50 40, 30, 20, and 10 meters, uh, with a five degree and a 10 degree attack angle. Um, examining the attack with 10 degree attack angle, as you can see in the graph, uh, when the victim is expected to start decelerating, it instead accelerates, crashing into the uh, target obstacle. Um, the only case where the AV comes, comes to a timely stop is when the attack starts at 10 meters, because the attack doesn't even start um, when the, uh, the because this is because of a simulation constraint, uh, which is the car stop even before the attack even starts. Um, interestingly, we also observe that the vehicle collides with the obstacle when the attack is implemented for just 20% of the entire vehicle's trajectory. We then implement the attack uh, in an outdoor setting, uh, simulating a real-world scenario where a pedestrian walks in front of a vehicle at four meter distance and the spoofer is located at eight meter distance. Uh, we, place, um, we then record the number of uh, cloud points of the pedestrian based on the clustering uh, and also the corresponding clustering from autoware. Um, as shown in the graph, when the pedestrian walks uh, into the attack region, uh, he's fully obscured. Finally, we conduct a proof of uh, concept evaluation in moving vehicle scenario where the victim ladder is placed on top of a robot and a vehicle. Um, in the robot case, as you can see, uh, we, we move the robot uh, towards the pedestrian located five meters away uh, at a speed of 0 0.1 meter per second and then move, ba move it back. Um, we collect the uh, the percentage of uh, the point cloud removed from the target uh, obstacle, and also the success rate, which defines the frames, number of frames where the obstacle is removed. We observe an 85% success rate where the entire obstacle is removed. For the, for the victim car, uh, we, for safety uh, reasons, we use a traffic cone instead of a pedestrian, and we move the car at five kilometers per hour, and we observe an 83% success rate where the entire uh, traffic cone was removed. We then evaluate how the existing defenses uh, work against the attack, and we, sh uh, we observe that uh, they fail to mitigate the attack, um, uh, our attack. M more uh, details can be found in the paper. Uh, these two defenses fail because they consider spoofing and object hiding. Instead, our attack completely removes the point cloud. We then propose to extend the existing defenses to detect fake shadows um, and also look for uh, disparities in the point cloud in the form of huge gaps in horizontal angles. And uh, we, we, receive, uh, we achieve 91% um, in the fixed shadow detection and 100% true, true posture rate in the uh, azimuth-based detection. One limitation of our attack is that it can only attack single spinning lighters, and we do not consider attacking uh, solid state lighters. Uh, also, attacking lighter at distances is non-trivial because the laser pulses are more sparse. Um, and uh, attacking a ladder moving at high speeds requires uh, extreme precision. To conclude, we discover a new physical removal attack which removes legitimate ladder point cloud. We show that uh, three ladder-based uh, detection models and three fusion-based detection models are impacted by the attack. Uh, the attack requires short time periods to cause potential collisions. We achieve a 92% success rate uh, where 90% of the uh, point cloud is removed in real-world moving experiments. We achieve a 92 percent, uh, sorry, we, um, we test and evaluate two different, uh, different strategies, receiving, uh, achieving up to a 91 percent true positive rate. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I am open for any questions right now.